ពីនោះនឹងគឺជាអង្គជនជម្រះប្រកាសបន្តក៏ចំណើកការនីតិវិធីសម្ណាការនិងផ្ដល់ពីការជួនទៅមេត្តាវីកាពីក្រៃនុ
or that contact unequivocally and only means executed. I further note that at least one soldier's uh, alleged execution date is recorded as 8 January 1979, that is, as we all know, one day after the Vietnamese invaded, that is, English ERN 0032395, Khmer 00068025, and French 00778863. Finally, Mr. President, I note that the Khmer original document is not an original at all but a very poor quality copy. Uh, indeed, the first uh, Khmer to English translators believed they were unable uh, to translate the document, instead placing a document on the case file indicating that the document was illegible and, and there was no translation. This concludes, uh, Mr. President, Your Honours, my first part of my presentation. I move now to the second part, that is the living and working conditions. Um, in Trumpcock, in the Trumpcock cooperatives. In this very short part, I uh, will present a small group of uh, seven documents. Um, first, I would like to present a pair of documents that provide some insight into uh, DK policies in relation to health, E3-226. Um, these are minutes of um, a meeting of the Ministry of Health and Social Affairs dated the 10th of June 1976, English ERN 3365 ending 67 and 69, Khmer 0017150, ERNs ending 52 and 55, and French 0029-6159, and ERNs ending on 6, 1 and 6, 3. Um, Mr. President, during this meeting, several reports were made uh, concerning the health situation in the DK, uh, including the following, and I quote, uh, we were able to distribute medicines to bases as set forth in the party's uh, direction. Up to date, there was no medicine that, that was decayed or destroyed by fire. The diet ration could be resolved by ourselves and we made many um, and we made clothes for many units. In May 1976, we did not go and get fishes from the Ministry of Commerce. We were self-supported. You can find that on English ERN 0018 and French 0029-6159. The following quote is which as follows, and, uh, we had produced medicine for malaria and all kinds of medicines and serums. serums. However, we had postponed production of a number of medicines due to the shortage of raw materials. The capability of producing medicine was in line with what Ankar planned, English ERN 0018-3367, my 0017-152, and French 0029-6161. Although I also note that the word Ankar does not appear in the Khmer and French version uh, of this document. This report, Mr. President, goes on to say that concerning medicine production, uh, and I quote, during the past one or two months we had received much progress, more experiences in production and quality controlling sections, um, and as well as um, for those who operated the machines, end of quote. Uh, English ERN 0018-3367, Khmer 0001-7152, and French 0029-6161. And in summary, this document uh, concludes, and I quote, the health issue was too much alleviated if compared um, to last year. But still there was significant shortfall of medicine both for people and domestic animals diseases. After the war, many poisonous substances made life of people and domestic animals dangerous. End of quote. English ERN 0018 3369, Khmer 0017 
155 and French 0296163. Um, the next document is uh, E3-166, that's a revolutionary flag, issues 2 and 3, February, March 1976, ERNs 0051783324, Khmer 006. 00063214217 and French 00492779-80. And the issue of this re revolutionary flag reported that, and I quote, since modern medicine is currently not plentiful, in their position as leaders, our cadres must think about making large sufficient quantities of traditional medicines of every type to treat and maintain the health of our people, doing the offenses to put up new petty dike systems and dig new canals during this dry season, and also for storage for when our people have their hands tied up in the rice farming offensive during the approaching rainy season." End of quote. Uh, it is also noted that, and I quote, the Ministry of Social Affairs and Public Health must think about the entire country, end of quote. We can therefore see, uh, Mr. President, Your Honours, that access to medicine and hospitals was a CPK priority, and moreover that there is no indication of a policy to systematically deny uh, new people access to medicine and hospitals. Uh, the second part that I would like to discuss are CPK guidelines about so-called unacceptable uh, behavior. Um, uh, it goes to uh, ex uh, acceptable and unacceptable beha behavior of the people in Afghanistan, especially uh, specifically during the democratic Kampuchea regime. And I would like to re uh, present four documents in this category. The first is a document that sets out the CPK leadership's overall view uh, of base and new people. Document E3 slash 216. These are uh, standing committee minutes of 24 August 1975. Uh, English ERN 0085 Khmer 0008489, and French 0034337. And in this document, uh, it is written that, and I quote, we prefer to talk about the overwhelming majority of base and new people who are good, end of quote. CPK leadership was also very careful to give guidelines throughout the DK period about bad behavior and how this should be corrected. Next, my next document is E3-10. It's a revolutionary flag of September uh, in October 1976. English ERN 0045530, Khmer 0006366. Excuse me, 00063061 and French 00491892. In this uh, issue, E310, the CPK leadership stresses that, and I quote, internal contradictions must be sorted out as internal contradictions. They are our flesh and blood. They are not counter revolutionary. They do not provoke and attack the revolution. These are contradictions due to misunderstanding. They must be sorted out by successive education." End of quote. Uh, as to how to do this, the flag goes on to explain that, and I quote, one way is to educate, to do political, ideological, and organizational work within the general framework in order to lessen or postpone the contradiction and not let them be sharp all the time." End of quote. In E3-746, our next document, uh, which is a revolutionary flag of July uh, 1978, we can read the following on English ERN 0042-8305, Khmer 006450, 
that cannot be correct. I will give you uh, a minute later, Mr. President, if that's all right, uh, the full number. French 00061188. The party leadership uh, commands that, and I quote, uh, they must be most vigilant about the stances and attitudes of carrying out work in bureaucratic, Mandarin, authoritarian, militaristic, liberal, single-minded, styles. The styles of taking no responsibility for anything vis-à-vis -vis the party, the revolution, and the people, end of quote. Um, and then, revolutionary flag of July 1976, which is E3-4, English ERN. Uh, 00268924. And I apologize, maybe the command number is just uh, a smaller number. It's, I see here, Khmer 0062918. And the Khmer N number of the previous document is 006450. And the French ERN of E3-4 is 0039978. Um, and this issue, Mr. President, explained that, and I quote, in order to build the designated party branches in the cooperatives, it is imperative to totally eradicate the leftist and rightist viewpoints. Leftist meaning not believing in the masses, underestimating the mass movement, seeing all the masses as being the enemy. Rightist meaning just continue to induct them carelessly, not based on the foundation of the party statutes. Uh, it is um, wrongly said by me, and I apologize, Mr. President. The Khmer ERN number of, of E3-746 is 0064500. And the Khmer ERN of E3-4 uh, I will give you in a short moment. Uh, Mr. President, the final document I would like to present... Uh, <laughs> Yes, uh, the Khmer e ERN of E3-746 is um, 00064500. And the Khmer e ERN of E3-4 will follow uh, shortly. Uh, Mr. President, the final document I would like to present in this second part of my presentation is um, uh, an S21 confession of Chu Chet, former Secretary of the West Zone. Um, as a preliminary matter, I noted that during yesterday's document hearing, the prosecution's response to uh, our appeal brief was noted. Oui, Maître Copé, quel est l'objectif de l'utilisation de ce document Est-ce qu'il ne serait pas plus approprié pour le moins d'attendre que nous ayons examiné les faits concernant S21 avant de se référer à ce document the, the excerpt that I would like to cite relates directly to very relevant people in Sector 13 and District 105. Maître Copé, entendez-vous lire le contenu des confessions, des aveux donnés par Chouchette à S21 Êtes-vous informé que 
les crimes de torture font partie des accusations qui sont portées contre les accusés et les tortures commises à S21. In this specific case, it is a uh, passage relevant to Trumcock uh, district and sector 13. Um, so uh, it is our position that if the prosecution is allowed to read excerpts from alleged confessions at Grand Tachan, uh, we would be able to do. We should be able to do the same in relation to this specific S21 confession from Chuchet when he speaks about uh, Saum, uh, the Sector 13 secretary, Takif, Saum's deputy, um, Pen, and um, like I said, Takif a member of the Trump Cock district. So I think, uh, in essence, there is uh, an, uh, no difference whatsoever between what the prosecution did, uh, reading excerpts of his confession to make his point, and reading um, me, by me uh, parts of the uh, confession of Chuchet making our point. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, there is a world of difference between what we did and what Mr. Kope wishes to start doing right now. Um, first of all, we read from uh, an interrogator's notebook. Uh, as is clear from the references I was reading, um, uh, this was different than a confession signed by a prisoner. Um, uh, the note, uh, the identification of the prisoners, um, statements by the interrogators describing why they were arrested, um, that is admissible evidence. What Mr. Kope wants to do now, if I understand, is to read statements in the body of the confession of Chu Chet. Uh, making assertions that certain cadres from the southwest zone were part of traitorous networks. He wants to use, and let's be very clear about this, Noon Chea, in this courtroom, wants to justify killing people by the confessions his people obtained by torture back in the 70s. Nothing uh, uh, could be more barred by the torture convention than that. That is exactly uh, the purpose of the torture convention, is to prevent people from relying on confessions obtained by torture to prove the, the guilt of that person. Um, so uh, to say that we're doing the same thing, I could not disagree more. Um, Mr. President, we uh, made a I, we, we made a, uh, a special appeal ground on this very issue. The torture Convention uh, absolutely protects the use, um, protects the accused or any accused or suspect against uh, torture. Uh, the question whether certain elements from a confession which might possibly be torture tainted, whether they can be used for other purposes, is something now to be debated by um, uh, the Supreme Court Chamber. But again, I do not see any difference in why it is that uh, the prosecution is allowed to use uh, parts of these confessions from Kang Chan for their purposes, and we are not allowed to use uh, parts of these confessions for our purposes.
สมจำเรียบลูกวิบีเตอร์กูเปทาปัจจบันนี้เนี่ยเป็นนี้องจำเรียบมันอนุญาตเอาลูกอ่านในในคลำสาในกำหนดให้ได้บานโมปีกาเพื่อตระหนักกรรมที่ปเจียทางกาปีองจำเรียบอนุญาตเอาปริยญาอ่านคือเปียปอนแต่หนึ่งกากำหนดอัตตสัญญาณหนึ่งอนุญาตเอาอ่านแต่จำนาปนอคือปัจเจกฉบับลอยหายกาปีมาสมัยฉันมีมีมีเพียบข้อคณีง่ายเรื่องกูบ่มนองในโลกอ่านแต่เลือกคลำสาคือเอาอย่างไรมันอันยาตีบัวนั่นคือฉบับหามขอดมันเอาไปปลาปลาในหลักพ่อและบานบอกปีกาเพื่อตรวจกรรมในยกบอกไปเชื่อจิมบุรุษท่านองค์การสู้ดังดาวตีโอเคฉันเข้าใจว่าต้องไปต่อฉันไม่สามารถใช้ดิจิเนอ Um, part of his confession, which you know, not necessarily is a result of torture, but I'll, I'll, I'll move on. Um, just to make sure that I will actually um, be in time. I, yes, I think so. Um, Mr. President, I move on to um, document E3 slash 294. And this is a this is a document relating to the treatment of targeted groups. In this part, I will focus on three specific groups: uh, the Khmer Krom, the Buddhists, and former Lon Nol soldiers and officials. Um, Khmer Krom is coming up um, all the time in this part of the segment. That's why we would like to say something about it as well. Uh, as we said. Um, Yesterday, and in earlier submissions, we questioned whether the Khmer Krom have a place as a targeted group within case 002-02 trial. However, assuming that the Chamber's forthcoming decision determines that they do, I want to mention two documents which we consider to be relevant. First of all, E3-294. It is a foreign broadcast information service compilation for October 78, which includes a 30 September 1978 report by the Phnom Penh Domestic Service in Cambodia on the, visit, on the visit of Japanese Friendship Association delegation to the South West region. English ERN 001-70173 and there are uh, no Khmer or French, French translations. Um, E3-294 uh, details how the delegation has traveled to Takiu and where they interviewed some Khmer Krom who were described as, and I quote, victims of Vietnamese persecution and suppression, and I quote, and who, I quote, have taken refuge in Kirivon district. The report continues that, and I quote, the friendly Japanese visitors were shocked by the tales told by the Khmer Krom compatriots about the massacres and atrocities perpetrated by the Vietnamese with the aim of exterminating the Khmer race in a most fascist and savage manner, end of quote. E3 slash um, 2435, presented by the prosecution yesterday, uh, that is a document from the Ang Tasom Commune Chief, dated 26 April 1977, and addressed to the Tramcroc District Office, requesting instructions in relation to the treatment of Khmer Vietnamese families. English ERN 0032 and French 0061225. Uh, the request details the situation of Khmer couples who request authorization to go to Vietnam. It notes that some Cambodian husbands had married young wives and some young wives had married Cambodian husbands. And the request said that if they were all young, they would send them to Ankar. Requested to know, and I quote, if it was like this, what would Ankar decide then? Please inform us. End of quote. Um, the second part is related to um, the treatment of Buddhists. And um, there are two documents. Or rather, one document and one video clip concerning uh, the Buddhists video that I would like to show. And I would like to start with a video, uh, which is a video E3 slash 3201R. And uh, this video depicts a visit 
by uh, with only a delegation of uh, uh, top Vietnamese leaders uh, to the DK in 1975. Um, As the video shows, the delegation is taken to visit um, and admire the silver pagoda at the royal palace and the statues of Buddha it contains. Uh, the footage also clearly shows that the CPK leader, key leaderships are in attendance, including Nguyen Chia and Pol Pot and the other members of the standing committee. Um, I would like to note that it is the footage uh, that we're interested in, not the commentary provided. Uh, but I do highlight that the commentary emphasizes that most Cambodians are Buddhists. Uh, Mr. President, I would now like to request the chamber um, uh, and the AV unit to play this video on screen. Uh, the relevant time point is from minute uh, 6.30 till uh, 8.55, so um, uh, AV unit uh, staff, uh, uh, it is the file called uh, clip uh, one. Uh, Mr. President, uh, 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 Um, the next document, uh, Mr. President, I would like to present is E3-2818, uh, that is a book uh, from Ian Harris called Buddhism under Pol Pot. I would like to refer to English ERNs 0070411, excuse me, 0070411, ending in 0335. 318 by 21, 0 by 
Suggest that there are other causes for poor treatment of the Buddhists, such as the U.S. bombing of the Godas and the fact that the monks were used as spies in the Republic. Harris um, noted that during the Civil War, uh, one third of the Godas were destroyed by the American bombing, that is, uh, English year N0070-40115. Which were uh, specifically targeted for strategic purposes, that is, English year N0070. Um, Ian Harris also writes that uh, during the decay there were locations where people were still allowed to perform Buddhist worship during the decay, English 0070 uh, or individuals given such permission at English year N0070 Harris also suggests that, and I quote, despite the very significant losses sustained by the population of which these rogue monastics formed a part, uh, there was no policy for the systematic liquidation of monks in democratic Kampuchea. End of quote. And you can find that at English ERN 0070-4083. Moreover, Harris notes that it was a fact that the Khmer Republic used monks as spies. The spies that were caught were killed because of their being a spy, which is unrelated to the fact that their status as monks as well. You can find that on English ERN 007 uh, when monks were uh, executed, Harris said this was, and I quote, not primarily because of their commitment to the Buddhist religion, but was related to the fact that they were considered to be enemies associated with higher levels of the previous regime. And of quote, English ERN 0070 and finally, uh, Mr. I President, in Ian Harris' book, um, it says that two years of research indicates that abbots and their assistants were rarely executed simply by virtue of their seniority. You can find that at English ERN 4084. I would like um, my to end my presentation with uh, another video, uh, Mr. President, Your Honours, it's a video which relates to former Lord Noel soldiers and officials and their practices during the Civil War. It is E3 3116R, and um, what I would like to show you is uh, an excerpt of um, Australian journalist John Pilger's documentary, uh, Cambodia, called The Blood is And the relevant excerpt is um, two minutes from 22-22-24-11. And the, the documentary um, is explaining that eating enemies River is an ancient tradition of warfare in Cambodia, and the film shows this practice uh, done by lone soldiers. And if you allow me, Mr. President, um, then I would like to tell the AV unit that this is a foul called clip two. Perhaps you could explain the relevance of this video for, the, for this part of the film. Um, I actually have my, my point here after the, the video. Um, um, so the relevance should be explained before we decide whether you can show it or not for us to be able to. That's fine. Uh, well, former Lonol soldiers and officials um, um, as uh, hapless victims of a brutal Khmer Rouge. This video suggests otherwise. It shows that some practices, often wielded as example, 
examples of the Khmer Rouge are uniquely depraved in humanity. Recently highlighted, by the way, by Ambassador David Sheffer in a speech at American University, had in fact long been practiced by the Long North Army and had been documented and screened in the public domain. And this video, in our view, perfectly illustrates the point we have sought to make today and throughout this trial so far, and that is that we need to set aside uh, the popular narrative of what happened uh, in the DK, what we think we know, and come to this trial with a critical and open mind. So I think uh, this, relevant, uh, this video is very relevant, um, especially also in the light of uh, Sai Sen's testimony and, and how it is reported. I think uh, we tried to show this video earlier, um, and then I remember you said uh, this is something that we should not put before a witness, but rather present it during uh, a doctor's hearing. Um, the eating, the practice of eating the livers of dead corpses is apparently something that was done frequently by Lono soldiers and officials, and I think it uh, could necessarily put uh, this practice in context uh, in relation to uh, Sai Sen's testimony. So I think although it, it's footage that shows events prior to 1975, I think it's very relevant. Uh, and, um, it is on the case file. It's been there for a long time in the case file. And I think we should be allowed to show this two minutes uh, to the chamber. เราพิระจุนเตอร์ลูกไทรจักรอมโคลดิเฟนต์นำไปสไลด์ตอบจนนั่งปัญหาดิได้เลยสมรสมว่ามีตัวบีไปเจอกบีจงกรอยนี่ส
In the cities, Lon Nol was rallying popular support for the expulsion of the Vietnamese from their sanctuaries. In the ensuing confusion, atrocities were committed against the Vietnamese who had lived in Cambodia for generations. While thousands of innocent Vietnamese were killed, ancient traditions of warfare would dictate a more gruesome fate for enemy soldiers. Culturally, there were great gaps between the Western perceptions of what was acceptable and the Cambodian ideas of what was acceptable. When we had film of Cambodians cutting open uh, bodies and ripping out the liver and eating them, Western opinion was pretty shocked by the Long Wall forces doing that. But this is what Cambodians are doing, were doing by tradition. Uh, it is said that it's getting the spirit, the strength of your enemy. Uh, it's a, a ritual. Quite frequently in the early years of the war, as a mark of friendship, they would ask you to come and join them in eating the liver of, uh, of the dead. On one occasion, I was having lunch with the governor of one of the provinces. And out on the lawn in front of the governor's residence, there were all these uh, so-called Viet Cong bodies, corpses laid out, all of them splashed open and the liver taken out. And a truck arrived and they started talking tossing these dead bodies uh, under the truck. So uh, it, it was not very appetizing. Uh. And with this video clip, Mr. President, I video my, uh, my document document. បាទអញ្ចឹងអង្គប្រកាសប្រកាសសម្រាក់ថ្ងៃត្រង់ចាប់ពីពីរនេះទៅទៅលោកដល់ម៉ោងមួយ Some right, Joe. Some Jane Crouch Hall.